West Virginia American Water involved in? So we currently provide water service to about 30 percent of the state's population. And we do a little bit of sewer service as well uh, in a couple of pockets. But we our, our main kind of population areas were here in Charleston, uh, we head westwards over to Huntington. We're down in Bluefield and Princeton. We're up in uh, kind of the western area, Oak Hill, Fayetteville. Um, and then we just purchased the, the Jefferson Utility System back in October of, of last year. So coming up on a year there uh, of being part of the Eastern Panhandle and, you know, all the, the exciting things are obviously going on there. I remember we did some interviews in regards to this purchase about a year ago, and there were people for it and people against it as well. Uh, a year later, Brooks, how has that uh, absorption of that system been in regards to its customer service and the feedback you've gotten? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think one of the things that's a challenge on our end is is the rate component, and that's something we hear about often and something we're very mindful of to kind of work through. But I, I think it's safe to say that nobody likes paying more for a service, whether it's your cell phone or your cable bill or a gallon of milk. I don't want to pay more for what I feel like is the same thing. So um, it was, it was, there was some, some concern from, from customers that, hey, I, I turned my tap on yesterday and it cost X and water came out. And then you guys buy it and I turn the tap on and now it costs Y and water's still coming out. So what am I, what am I getting here and, and why is this, why am I having to pay more? And, you know, there's a handful of things that kind of factor into that. But when we talk specifically about Jefferson Utilities, that system hadn't had a – the rates had not been adjusted in any way for over 12 years, which is a pretty long time in, in, in utility, the utility world. Um, and it needed some, some, some upgrades. It's overall pretty good system, pretty, in pretty good shape. It's on the newer side when you compare it to other parts of the state. But there are still upgrades that, that needed to happen and that are in the process of happening and we're, we're working through. So um, I think that's kind of been one of the things we've heard is, is, is that, that, that component. But then as we – you get out there and actually dig lines up and put new things in and, and, and fix service and repair repair broken lines and that kind of thing. I think people over over the course of time will start to kind of see and understand that benefit. But it's certainly certainly something we hear. Maria? So so Brooks, um, what exactly? How much of an increase? I remember seeing some um, information with the PSC. What was the increase um, for uh, Jefferson County when you came in there? Yeah, so it's a good question, and it's kind of a, I don't want to sound squirrely, but it is it is difficult to answer directly because it, rates are based solely on on usage. So you know, however many gallons you use is going to dictate what what your rate's going to be. So it's not a flat rate per service, um, and it, and it fluctuates a little bit. On average, most households are going to use between you know if you're probably a single person living by yourself, you're going to be closer to maybe two thousand twenty five hundred gallons somewhere in that range a month. Um, and then if you've got a house full of a bunch of teenagers who don't know when to stop taking a shower, you know, your bill is going to be 4,000 4, gallons a month, 5,000 gallons a month, maybe, maybe higher depending on, on what that looks like. So it really kind of depends on what that individual situation is. Generally, though, on the whole, yeah, the, the initial increase is probably around for average customers, average usage, probably in that like $10 range. Uh, and, and the Public Service Commission actually ordered as part of that acquisition the rates for, for the Jefferson Utility customers be phased in over the course of, of three years. So it's, it's not an immediate jump to, to full West Virginia American water rates. There's a phase in, so it's still in the process of kind of stepping in percentage-wise over the course of time there. Go ahead, Mike. Brooks, how, how many... Uh, by the way, Brooks, Mike is also a delegate in West Virginia House of Delegates, in case you didn't know. <laughs> how many uh, water um, systems are public versus private in the state of West Virginia percentage-wise? And is there a d difference in cost, whether you're on a public system or a private system? Yeah, so the majority, there are, gosh, it's probably close to 275, roughly, uh, public water systems in the state of West Virginia. You know, I, our system is, is technically one, but like I said, we serve uh, over 30, about 30 percent of the state's population. A lot of those systems that I just referenced, those 275, some are, are on the bigger end. You know, Berkeley PSD, for example, is, is the biggest uh, public water utility in the state, and it's, it's close to 30,000 customers. The average system in West Virginia is probably 800 to 1,000 customers. So there's a lot of small communities, a lot of rural areas that, that are, are kind of tough to reach and tough to get access to funds. Um, so that, that creates, creates a challenge there for some of those. But, yeah, that, as far as size and scale and how that all works, um, that, that's about the lay of the land there. Um, as far as kind of the, the costs, you know, the, typically as a private water provider, 
our, our, our rates are a little higher, and there's a handful of, of reasons there. Uh, you know, one is we don't have access to some of the low interest loans or taxpayer funded grants that a public utility would have. Yeah, another is we pay taxes. And so that's about 17 cents out of every dollar that, that we co- collect from, from, from customers uh, goes back into those communities uh, for taxes. And then, you know, the third difference, I think, when you talk about a public versus a private and kind of how those things are different, you know, we really are pretty proactive with our investments in, in infrastructure. And kind of want to go on a, a bit of a tangent there while I'm talking on you. We talk about infrastructure. We think about you know, a lot of things. We think about roads bridges, things that we can see and that are, are visible. So if, if a road or a bridge is 100 years old and it hasn't been touched, it's going to be a mess, right? It's going to be full of potholes. There's going to be slips in the road. There's going to be failures. There's going to be all kinds of problems. Our water and sewer infrastructure is, is the same, but it's hidden underground. So we largely go on about our daily lives sort of oblivious to the condition. You know, did I turn my tap on and did water come out? And, and does the water leave my house when I'm done with it? So we really only talk about water systems when they fail or when something kind of catastrophic happens. And, and therein lies, I think, our current problem is that much of the water infrastructure in the United States, and particularly in West Virginia, is, is aging and it's in, in serious need of replacement and, and upgrade. And we actually, there's a, a report that we, we talk about quite a bit, but the American Society of Civil Engineers um, a couple of years ago graded West Virginia. They did it nationwide. But West Virginia's water and sewer infrastructure got a D. And you know, like I said, I haven't been in school for a bit, but I, I recall that was that was a no-no on a report card. So, again, it's, it's a nationwide, nationwide problem, but we're in a little bit worse shape than a lot. And I think that there's been some degree of, of complacency across the state when it comes to kind of investment in these systems. A lot of, a lot of these utilities are, are kind of cash-strapped. Because there's been an overemphasis, I think, on keeping rates low, but that comes at at the expense of neglect of investment in these in these systems in this infrastructure, which just means that they have to then economize on routine maintenance. They have to defer upgrades for as long as, as possible, and and we really that's the difference with with the public and private approach too. Is we don't we don't take that approach. And we invest very proactively in our system year in and year out, so that we don't get to you know oh no. Or, or even worse, like a, a too late. As a company, as a private company, we're very intentional about about addressing those needs in, in that moment. Brooks Krislip is our guest. He is the Director of Business Development for West Virginia American Water. Brooks, what is your interest in Berkeley County, if any? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all aware that, you know, Berkeley County, the Eastern Panhandle, has been really a, a driver of the state's economy for, for quite some time. You know, there's been sustained population growth, employment growth, uh, income. Uh, you know, Berkeley County has, is, is the fastest growing county in, in the state. I think it added it, it, over 2,500 residents or so since 2022. So it's, just, it's growing at a very rapid rate. And it's, I think that's anticipated to, to continue. I think those positive growth trends are, are, are predicted to keep going. And likewise, you know, you're seeing manufacturing activity. You're seeing you know, folks like you know, Procter & Gamble and Clorox. Um, so, yeah, that's obviously when you talk about from a business standpoint, that's a place we want to be. There's a lot happening there, and I think that there's there's opportunity for us to work with with the county and with municipalities in the, in the Panhandle and in Berkeley County to try to find solutions and ways where you know, there may be some opportunity for some mixed funding or some different partnerships that will help uh, accelerate some of those things and, and take care of those. You know what we call they're good problems, right? They cause all that growth creates uh, creates good, a lot of good things, but it, it creates strain and challenges too. So we want to. If, if there's things we can do to help and, and be part of that, we certainly want to look into that and do that. How does that work, Brooks, when you have an entity like the the public service district here that um, that has been um, obviously doing this work for forever? Um, do you make an approach? Do you have a conversation? Do you go to the county commission? How's that conversation begin? Yeah, that's a good question, and, and that, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I mean, it, it's really just about having having conversations, making introductions, talking to folks. Um, you know, th- there's there's a lot of things going on in, in Berkeley County you know, right now, and and I think just the the ability to kind of maintain relationships and be able to communicate with with, uh, with the different leaders on that, I think, is, is really important. There, there's no ability. We there's nobody in the state, um, us included. There's no ability to kind of do any kind of takeover. You hear that word kind of thrown out a lot. 
like it, like we can just come in in the dark of night in secrecy and take a thing. I mean, there's there has to be a two way street. It has to be something that's a a good opportunity and a good good deal for for most importantly for customers, but also for um, you know for the community, for the for the municipality, for the county, and then likewise for for us as a company. So that's really what what um, what we try to do is just have those conversations. Yeah, you know, work through a lot of those those details, and then just kind of find out, hey, what what is something that we could craft here that may be may be helpful? And it's not always, like I mentioned, for some communities, it's please just take this off our hands. We we don't have the resources to run it anymore. For others, like Berkeley County, who are who are uh, on the whole, I think there's some challenges, but on the whole, you know, running a good system, there are, are are other things we can do that would be helpful for for the community going forward as well. So just again, just kind of talking through that with everyone and exploring all of that, so you get all those all those details and options kind of out on the table for, for everybody, public included, to have an, have an idea of what's going on. So, Brooks, uh, let's say I bought 1,000 acres and I want to d- develop, you know, a couple of thousand houses on the west side of 81. Would I be mm-hmm. able to work with American Water, or do I have to use a um, public-private partnership to get water on the west side of 81? Yeah, so good, good question, too. Yeah, you know, right now there's really no kind of public – we call public water. There's no real water access outside of a, an individual well system on the west side of 81. Very limited. A uh, lot of lot of uh, kind of open, undeveloped area on that that side of the county. Um, so really, a couple options. One would be you could partner with the the Berkeley County Public Service District, and that the, the question is going to be, are they willing to run a line underneath 81 and get to wherever that that thousand acres is? You know, a thing that we can do, and, and we have explored this in, in other parts in, in in Berkeley County as well, but other parts of the state is you know, there are opportunities depending on what's what's coming in. Let's say that thousand acres is going to be some kind of some kind of big development, like I said, a, a couple hundred thousand houses, or you know, some kind of big user like a, a Procter and Gamble. Um, there, there are ways where we can build a system on that on that acreage that will serve that community. Yeah, you know, if there's not water there, we can go look for it and see if we can find a well nearby. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really good groundwater up in the eastern Panhandle, so we can drill a well and, and put a treatment plant right there on site. That will kind of customize to to the needs of that particular site, and then yeah, you know, that also creates the ability to kind of expand uh, kind of westward a little bit there as well, and 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 add some some uh, some growth as things come in come into that part of the, the county. But yeah, that that's that's an option, and then like I said, the, the public private component would be where we would as a private company we could partner with say the Berkeley PSD, and they have a mixed funding there and mixed management and, and the ability to kind of do a little bit of kind of best of both worlds there and and, uh, and and get some kind of solution crafted that would fit for that. Brooks, have you done that elsewhere, those public-private uh, partnerships in West Virginia particularly? We have, yeah, and they've actually been really successful. It's a great way for us to extend lines at, at minimal cost and impact on customers, uh, but then also utilize the the uh, the public funding that's available you know, through a grant so what we'll do is we will partner with some public entity and it can be it's pretty broad ranging here in Kanawha county there's a, a regional development authority that we work with um, over in putnam county we work with the building commission uh, we work with a lot of county commissions as well directly so they're able to go kind of design the project uh, design what they want work with their engineers have say and control and, and dictate where they want growth to occur and then we make a, a contribution, and that's where the, the, the P, the private P, comes in there. We make a contribution to that project, and then we'll work on getting the water supply there as well. So it's really a good way to, to use mixed funding to, uh, to, to get some of these things funded. Brooks, one of the complaints I hear about West Virginia American Water is that if you have a system, and let's say that system is 200 miles away from Martinsburg that needs money, needs repair, mm-hmm that the repair cost for that system is dispersed among all of those who pay a monthly bill to West Virginia American Water. And let's say that you're in Jefferson County now, maybe you're in Martinsburg. That means that your utilizers of West Virginia American Water Services in Jefferson County are now paying for the repairs that need to be done in 200 miles away county from Martinsburg. Right. Is that accurate? Yeah, and that's- yeah, yeah, it is. And we have what the, the Public Service Commission has kind of intentionally said, we think this is the best model for, for, for our state. Um, and it's, it's a single statewide tariff. So you know, whether you live in Boone County or Jefferson County and you're a West Virginia American Water customer, the rate is, is the same. So you know, what happens is over the course of time as we're investing in different parts of the system, if we had to make a big upgrade or improvement in, in let's say, Cabell County over around Huntington, um, those costs would be spread out amongst the entire customer base. 
So likewise, if we were to do something in, in Jefferson County, and it's, it's a big cost, those costs are spread out amongst you know, the folks down in Cabell County. So really over the course of time, there's kind of that yin and yang back and forth where it, it evens out. So you know, we're, invest, we're, not, we're not just investing in one, one part of, the, of the, the system. We're kind of each year kind of taking a look at where the, the immediate need is and focusing on that. But it really it works that way for all systems. So if, if Berkeley PSD were to, to do something on the southern part of its, its water system, folks on the northern part are still going to see a rate impact there, even if it's just down the street and I, it, doesn't benefit, it doesn't benefit or impact me directly as a customer, even if it's just a neighborhood away, I'm still going to have to pay an increased rate as a customer of that system to, to, to cover that, that cost. A good example, too, like Morgantown, the Morgantown Utility Board here recently just acquired the Cheat Lake PSD. So Cheat Lake's just right outside of Morgantown. It's a small customer base. They have to do a big project upgrade there, and that's causing a 91% increase on all of Morgantown's water rates. So folks that live right downtown are going to have their rates you know, over, go up 91% to cover that project out at Cheat Lake. So it happens. I think that's kind of the model that a lot of the state uses. We just it, we're because we're a little bit bigger and we have that big customer base. You know, it does help though because we're not having to have that that cost all be impacted in just that one community. If we were doing a big upgrade in Jefferson County, all those costs and we didn't have that ability, all of those costs would be borne by those customers, and then you'd have really disparate rates across the state, which may discourage investment going forward. So this it, it's a help and a hurt, but it, over time we think it evens out and kind of helps keep rates pretty stable that way. If I'm a public service district and I'm providing water here in Berkeley County, I'm assuming, Brooks, that there's little, if any, profit built into that. I Correct. Could, right? But if, but if I go with a private water company, you have to make a profit to stay in business. So how, as a customer, how am I better going with a private company that needs to make a profit versus a public service district that we assume wants to break even? Right. Yeah, really good question. The public service districts are kind of structured to, to break even, just have enough coming in to kind of cover their, their basic costs and expenses. Um, you know, we are, as a regulated re utility, any returns on investment or, or profits are, that we earn are likewise at, at a predetermined regulated rate. So it's usually around 7 to 9%. But even then, that's only permitted any kind of return or profit on infrastructure upgrades. So we're only able to earn that 7 to 9% on, you know, for lack of a more technical term, new stuff. When we're building a new plant or we're, we're, we're replacing a line with a brand new one, those are the only, that's the only type of work that we're even authorized to earn that, that regulated percentage on. Now, a non-regulated business like a, you know, Apple or Chick-fil-A or, or whoever, they can earn kind of unlimited profits. You know, we, we can't. So, the, the, again, that's only if the PSC also has to determine that that, that, that investment we made was, was prudent for customers and, and necessary for the, the kind of provision of, of service. So, yeah, an argument for, you know, we hear that, an ar the argument for, you know, maybe reducing profit to therefore reduce rates. The problem is if you remove or reduce that, that further, we're not a good investment as a private company for those stockholders or investors, which means that we're not able to then attract the capital that's needed to maintain that high quality uh, of water service. And then we're no longer a good investment. And that's bad, I think, for the state and for, for customers across the board. Um, you know, so the, the, the benefit to customers is you know, we're able to do kind of bigger scale um, improvements faster and quicker and not have to go through some of the bureaucratic process that a public service district may to get something done. So we're able to Again, be more proactive and get those things taken care of year in and year out so that customers aren't faced with uh, having a big bill when there's a big problem that hasn't been addressed over the course of years. So, so Brooks, I'm going to push back just a little. Um, About two uh, minutes left, by the way. So I think with public service systems like this, that's where government actually is supposed to do their job and, and that break and even. I, I hear your argument. I just think right. yeah. the private consumer's cost is going to go up in this case. People right. don't want to pay more. Yeah. <laughs> That's all there yeah. is to it. No, and I mean, until yeah. I mean, something yeah. breaks down, Brooks, I think right. people are just like complacent. Like, okay, this is what yeah. I'm going to pay for my water. This is what I'm going to do. So, yeah, exactly. And I think, yeah, good point and, and well taken. Um, yeah, like we said, that goes back to kind of the, the good problems challenge. But yeah. you look at Berkeley County and you talk about the government, the public versus private kind of setup. 
you know, Berkeley County on the water side currently has about $130 million in debt and grants sitting on that system. And they're working through another 150 to 160 million on that same system. Real quick, I know we're running tight on time, but in 2016, Berkeley County noted in their comprehensive plan that they had adequate water supply for 20 years or longer. Well, that held true for seven years. 8,000 new connections showed up. That's that growth we're talking about. And by 2023, that system today and in 2023 was at full capacity. So if another big user wants to come into the Eastern Panhandle, they're going to Virginia or they're going to Maryland instead. So I think that's a good example of the difference between a public and a private. Those are the things we're, we would have taken care of or can take care of very quickly years ago, whereas I think a public system is going to have to struggle with that. So I think Berkeley County and the Eastern Panhandle as a whole are a really good opportunity for this mix of public and private funding yeah. to keep up with that speed of growth. And that's the, the, the speed, I think, is the biggest thing of being able to keep this so that there can be smart growth for the county in a way that makes sense and we can kind of keep that keep that for customers and keep that standard of living that they expect. Brooks, on, on that note, we wrap up our segment. I thank you for your time. Good information. Much appreciated.